Hello, in this video we're going to look at a fixed proportions production function and from it we're going to derive and graph the total product of labor, average product of labor, and marginal product of labor. So here is a fixed proportions production function where output is a minimum of what's in parentheses where L is units of labor and K units of capital. We're going to assume in the short run that capital is fixed it is fixed at two units, so I'm going to substitute two in for k. So output is a minimum of L or five times two, which is ten. So given this fixed proportions production function, in the short run, we want to find the total product of labor uh, equation, average product of labor equation, and marginal product of labor equation, and graph each one of those. So first thing to note is that the maximum output for this firm is going to be 10 units in the short run. So it doesn't matter what, uh, for example, if L were to be 100 or 200, the minimum of 210 is 10. So the maximum uh, output here is going to be 10. So let's start. Uh, the total product of labor will equal L if L is less than or equal to 10. The total product of labor will equal 10 if units of labor exceed 10. And I put a table together to help uh, see this. So labors are variable input in the short run. Capital is fixed at 2. So what happens if we keep adding units of labor? So we're just going to um, look at the production function and interpret it. If L is 0, the minimum between 0 and 10 is 0. If L is 1, the minimum between 1 and 10 is 1, and that's the amount of output. So with one worker, we produce 1 units of output. If we plug 2 into the production function, our output will be 2, and so on. Uh, if we plug 10 in for L, the minimum of 10 and 10 is 10, and again, that is our amount of output. If we plug in any value for L greater than 10, uh, we're still only producing 10 units of output. So our total product of labor will look like this. Uh, average product of labor, noting that average product is just total product divided by L. So to get average product of labor, we can take the total product of labor function and divide it by L. So when L is less than or equal to 10, L divided by L is just 1. So, you know, for example, if we have four workers and four units of output, four units of output divided by four is one. If we have ten workers divided by, uh, or if we have ten units of output and from ten workers, ten divided by ten gives us one again. So average product of labor will be one for any value of L less than or equal to ten. The average product of labor will be ten divided by L when the number of workers exceeds 10. So all I'm doing here, uh, equation-wise, is taking 10 and dividing it by L. So if we have 10 units of output from 12 workers, the average product of labor will be 10 divided by 12, and so on. All right, moving on to marginal product. Marginal product of labor is just the derivative of total product with respect to labor. So our marginal product of labor will equal 1 if L is less than or equal to 10, and it'll be 0 if L is greater than 10. So taking the derivative of L, we get 1. Taking the derivative of 10, a constant, we get 0. So that's the you know, one way we can see that this is indeed correct for marginal product. Another way to do this is let's take a look at the graphs. So total product of labor um, is going to look like this. It's going to be a straight line with a slope of 1 up to 10 workers, and then it maxes out at 10 units of output. So the slope of this first half is just 1, okay, rise over run. And then the slope of the second half, when L is greater than 10, well, the slope of the horizontal line is just 0. So again, one way we can visualize marginal product or uh, derive it is by looking at the graph of the total product of labor. Um, let's take a look at marginal product of labor, the graph of that over here. 
So marginal product will be one up to 10 units of workers. Okay, so every time we hire one more worker, output goes up by one in this range. And then when we hire beyond 10 workers, marginal product is zero. So marginal product will then fall to the L axis and just run along it. Um, graphing average product of labor, let me go back. So we said average product of labor is one when L is less than or equal to 10. So average product of labor will also equal marginal product of labor for the first 10 workers. And then as we go beyond hiring 10 workers, average product will equal 10 divided by L. So for example, if we have 20 workers and our maximum output here is just 10 with 20 workers, um, 10 divided by 20 means average product is one half. On average, each worker produces a half a unit of output. Um, oh, one other thing to you know point out here is that this graph over here is showing the the marginal average relationship. Since marginal product is neither above average product or below it, the average doesn't change. Once marginal product falls below average product, it tends to pull down the average product of labor. Okay, all right. Uh, so I hope you found this video helpful.